Okay, and to kickstart this section, before I go through, I've got five really interesting teaching points and questions to ask you about your profiles. But before I get to that, I have got another survey. So remember to vote using the plus button on your screen. And the question I have for you coming up next is, do you read someone's profile before replying to your, their message? Do you read someone's profile before you reply to their message? So this is all about seeing really just how important is that profile in people's decision making process as to who they move forwards with on those dates. So cast your votes now and I'll be getting back to you shortly when we've counted up, we've, done, we've crunched the numbers over here and seen what the outcome of that is. So as I said, what I want to do today is quite a practical section on how you can rebuild the profile section of your online dating profile. So this is the written bit. And what I'm going to go through now is I have five questions I'm going to ask you about your profile. So it's great if you have it to hand to go through. And then depending on the outcome of those questions, I've got five exercises that you could do, maybe not now, but maybe in your spare time tomorrow on the weekend to help to polish up your profile and make it even better and more captivating. So the first question is something that I've mentioned before, but it's it's probably the most common sort of online dating profile error and something that should be quite easy for you to fix. So I thought I've got to bring this up again. And the question I'm going to ask you is, is my profile too generic? Is it too general? Is it too similar to other people's profiles? So the name of the game in online dating is really that I want you to be able to stand out and to shine as an individual. In order to do that, it's very important that people are able to understand how you're different to all of the other people that they may be potentially matching and connecting with. And sometimes I think when you write a profile, it can be very easy to accidentally describe yourself sort of like, just like everybody else. So let me give you an example of what a, a profile that's too generic and too general will end up sounding like. Well, first of all, instead of being specific, you may just use general terms like, I like travel, or I like going out and I like staying in, or I like a nice glass of wine. Again, lots of people could probably describe themselves in a similar way. So we want to make sure that when you describe yourself, it it's puts a slightly different spin on the same things. And don't worry, I'm going to be telling you exactly how to do that. The other way we can come across a bit too much like everybody else is sometimes we can use cliches. So I'll, I'll give you an example and you'll know what I'm talking about. So an example of an online dating cliche could be, um, my friends would describe me as, um, or three words that describe me, or looking for a partner in crime. Now, I'm sure if you're listening, you'll probably have seen those statements on at least a few different profiles. So if that's you, what we want to do is we want to make sure that your profile doesn't have, again, those turns of phrase that might accidentally put you across just like everybody else. So instead, what I want to do now is here's my exercise. If you think your profile might be a little bit too much like everybody else's profile, here's what I want you to do. I want you to read through your profile and I want you to look at where you use general statements. And instead, I want you to start replacing them with specifics. So instead of saying, uh, I like travel, you could say, um, I'm uh, as soon as lockdown's over, I'm dreaming of being on Koh Samui, drinking out of a coconut. Or as soon as lockdown's over, um, I'll be having a pizza. Um, I'll be having a pizza amongst the cafes of Rome. It, you could also say, as soon as lockdown's over, I'll be cracking out my hiking boots and heading off to the Lake District. So you can see that by describing and being specific about that scenario, rather than saying, you know, I like travel, immediately we've got very, very different sounding profiles. And with each of those profiles, we can imagine a different person who's enjoying hiking in the Lake District or having pizza in Rome or a coconut in Thailand. And by being that little bit more specific, you're going to do a really good job of connecting with the people who share those value systems and who want the same things. So that's my first mission to you today is to go through and replace any general comments on your profile with things that are more specific. Okay, you ready for my second question? And this is a bit of a funny one, so let me describe it to you. My second question is, does your profile have a headline? Now you're like, Hayley, what's a headline? So a headline 
is one line that's by itself at the start of your profile, which just like a headline in a newspaper, sort of sums up a little bit about who you are. So forgive me, because this is the bit of this coaching session, which is going to remind you of GCSE English. So I'm going to apologize for that in advance. So when we have a profile, which is just a big block of text and that doesn't have any paragraphs in it, sometimes when people are reading on the internet, we can get a bit lazy and we, we don't sometimes read things in detail. So it's often more effective for you to split your profile down into smaller paragraphs. So perhaps instead of having one big chunk of profile, you might have four mini paragraphs of two or three lines. That will mean that your profile is much easier to skim read and it looks much more inviting to read as well. So what we want to do is particularly is have one line at the start which really summarizes you. So even if someone's reading your profile quite quickly, they're still going to get a strong sense of your personality and they're still going to feel really intrigued to keep writing. So let me give you an example of what I think could be a good headline. Um, and you could say something like, seeker of hot chilies, high fives, and heated debates. Oof. So that hopefully doesn't describe most of you out there. Um, it's not about, remember, copying this line. It's about understanding how you create a headline like that that's personalized to yourself. It could be that you say, fan of um, rambles in the countryside, uh, rambles in the countryside, romantic comedies, and cups of Earl Grey. So the, what the content of both these headlines is very different, but the structure is the same. I hope you've noticed what I've done here. It's not that clever. All I've done is chosen three of those specific details that we spoke about in the last section, and I put them together in a sentence. So that is often a very simple way of creating a good headline for yourself. So look at your likes and interests, look at things you've been specific about, pick out three things that are the most personal to you, put them in a fun list, um, start it with a catchy word like I'm a fan of this or seeking that. Um, or always interested in, or my happy place is, and then use that to create your headline. So what I want you to do is my second exercise is I want you to go through that online dating profile. I want you to chunk it down into little, those mini bite-sized paragraphs I spoke about. So it has easy read factor. And then, uh, and then finally, I want you to go about creating a headline for yourself. So just got the survey results in right now, which is why I was cheekily looking at my phone. And it, it's, a, it's an insane result. It's 99.9%. .9%, so basically everyone has said they do read someone's profile before replying to their message. So I'm glad we've got this section now that's actually even more than I thought. It just goes to show how important your profile is. So remember, if someone, if you send a message to someone, they're going to be reading your profile after it. So I really want you to make sure that this profile is as good as it possibly could be. So I'm very excited then to go through this next technique with you. And I actually started to hint about it in the last section. Do you remember in the last section where I gave an example of a headline, which was seeker of high fives, hot chilies and heated debates? Now, I want you to think. Now, not all of you, I'd imagine if you, you read a headline like that, I bet some of you would think, oh, that person sounds fun. And I think some of you would think, oh, gosh, no, <laughs> that person sounds terrible. So why that is interesting is you when you hear a line like that, you sort of assume that the person who's written that is, well, I would say spontaneous, enthusiastic, maybe a little bit uh, fiery. And what we've achieved then is you rather than saying I'm fiery, I'm enthusiastic, um, I'm like to seek out fun experiences, I'm spontaneous, rather than saying it that directly, by sh having a little story which describes how someone with those qualities would act, we're able to understand what this person is all about. This is a really cool writer's advice, which is my third point I want to share with you, which is called showing not telling. And let me explain that a little bit more. So when we tell someone what we're about, we end up using phrases like, my friends would describe me as, or three words that describe me are kind, funny, and nice. 
Now, of course, being kind, funny and nice, those are all really good qualities. However, I want you to wrap those qualities up in a way that's a little bit more exciting and a little bit more unique. So how we do that is instead of telling someone we're kind, funny or nice, instead, I want you to describe how someone is kind, funny and nice acts. So if you said, for instance, I'll always give you my last Rolo. You don't need to say then to say you're kind, funny or nice because someone who gives away their last chocolate is probably kind, funny and nice. So what you want to do, what I want to encourage you to do is go through your profile. Think about what qualities are really important for you to demonstrate. You know, what's your top personal quality that you want to share? Is it that you're fiery? Is it that you're sensitive? Is it that you're empathetic? Is it that you're a good listener? Is it that you're kind? And then instead of stating it that directly, I want you to tell and show a little anecdote of how a person who has that quality would behave and interact. And what you're going to find then is immediately, just like when we're being more specific, it will become your profile is going to become a lot more original. You're going to find it's written in this really fun and exciting way and that you start to really distinguish yourself from everybody else that's out there. There's also a really funny thing where if we tell someone directly, oh, I'm a really nice person, for some reason in our psychology, we sort of distrust that information and we're like, really, are you nice? If we show someone what we're all about, like by giving away our last chocolate, the people understand and come to their own conclusions what we're about. So sometimes it can actually be much more effective to describe how someone with those qualities acts rather than to just name the quality. Now, I hope this makes sense. And if possible, I'd love you to go through your profile and look out for one quality you really want to share with someone and think about how you could show that quality through describing it rather than telling it. Okay, so that was up. Luckily, everybody relax. Your English lesson is over for the day. Well, almost until we get to the bit about first messages. This next step is a little bit more simple, which is, is your profile written in a playful tone? Oof, what does that mean? So it means just like we pay attention to the individual words in your profile, people will also pay attention to what they think the vibe of it is. What's the tone of it? What does this person sound like? And ideally, I want your profile when someone reads it for people to think, wow, this person seems really approachable. They seem really fun. They seem really nice. They see, you know, it feels feels like they're the kind of person I could get along with. Now, here's a funny thing. When we write, often we write in a way that's actually a lot more formal and a lot more serious than how we are in person. So the trick is here is how can you get your profile to sound a little bit less like how you write and a little bit more like how you speak? So here's my exercise to start to get your profile to communicate those values of being approachable, friendly, and like a real person. So my exercise is simply that you read your profile out loud. Yep, I want you to go Shakespearean actor on this and read your profile out loud. When you do this, you're probably going to discover and start to think, huh, what do I sound like? If I was reading my profile, what qualities would I think that I have? And sometimes you might find that your profile is accidentally being written, as I said, in a way that's just a bit more serious and a bit more formal than what you're actually about. So we want to like quickly address that really. And how a little technique that you can do to make your profile sound more personal and more casual is you can actually try speaking your profile, dictating it and taking notes from that rather than just going straight into writing it. So use how you talk about yourself and your normal style of conversation. That's kind of how your profile should sound. So if you've got the, hopefully you've got the gist there. We want your profile to sound more playful. We want it to sound more conversational. So read your profile out loud. If you think you're not quite coming across that way at the moment, then I want you to try and say what you'd like to put in your profile and then take written notes from that. Okay, so final step in our profile rewrite session for the evening. Uh, and that is all about asking yourself, have I put in any playful points of disagreement in my profile? Is there anything Marmite in my profile? 
And by Marmite, I mean like you love it or you hate it. And I think that's about creating a profile which perhaps does a better job of attracting the right people to you. Because you'll remember, you're not here to impress everybody. You actually just want to attract the best matches towards you. And by being more specific, that will really help you to do it. And so a way that you can be more specific is actually to consciously put something in your profile, which you know that not everybody will like and to be OK with that. So rather than holding back um, on something you're really passionate about because you're worried about putting people off you, start to think of it this way, that if you can put in those details that make you really specific and make you really individual, then OK, not everybody's going to love that but then there will be some people who think wow this person sounds really cool um so that could be for instance um like um I was a fan I'm a big fan of chess and that was even before the queen's gambit or you could say something like uh, unapologetically a massive fan of love island or you could say something like um uh I don't uh, uh I'll pass on the wine but I'd love a cup of Earl Grey. So by saying these statements, yeah, they're not going to make everybody think, wow, this is the person for me, but they're going to do a better job of communicating your personality. And also when we create points of difference around ourselves and where you go out there, you're perhaps okay to say, um, I'm going to admit I'm also a bit of a fan of the footy. It shows that you're really comfortable with yourself. You're not here to please everybody. You're actually just here to express who you are and see who you connect with along the way, which is such a good attitude to have towards dating. So we've well, got your techniques now. Um, remember, it's all about making a profile that's nice and specific, not too general, creating a headline, showing, not telling who you are, making sure the profile's nice and playful, and also that you have a little bit of a Marmite comment in there that someone could disagree with. So before we get on to our questions, let's just do a really quick recap. So the recap here is we want to focus on creating points of difference. You're not here to please everyone. You're here to attract the people that are best for you. I really want you to write your profile in a conversational tone. So this is a big one, people. Make sure that your profile isn't too formal. Finally, always show, don't tell who you are. If there's a way that you can describe who you are as opposed to directly stating it, that will often work better. So before we get on to the next section, and yes, another survey, I have some questions that I really wanted to get around to answering. So the first one is from Nini878, who says, how do I show my interest without being too overwhelming? Um, great question. I think there's two parts to this, really. Uh, the first part, I think, is perhaps changing your mindset a little bit, which I think when we over-communicate interest, it might be because you put someone on a bit of a pedestal that perhaps they need to have spent more time getting to that place. So I need you to perhaps slow down your process of attracting and connecting with someone. And that could be by just reminding yourself to keep your feet on the ground and saying things to yourself like, they seem really great now, but... I've just started to get to know them or it's early days. So keep bringing yourself back to the present and don't put someone on too much of a pedestal too early on. Secondly, Nini, I really want you to focus on reciprocation. So dating is a bit like a dance. Um, you have to take, if you're going to take one step forward, you need the other person. Um, can it, you, you need the other person um, to take a step forwards too. And in order to do that, you want to have that reciprocation. So if you say something nice to them, they say something nice back, you keep going. If you're left hanging or you feel that someone's not quite matching your effort levels, it could be well worth taking a step back to give them a bit more space. Um, and I just want to remind you that if you are watching this session live, please don't forget to use the chat box, chat to me, chat to the team at Match, um, send your questions in as well, because I'm going to have a whole 30 minute live Q&A at the end of this session so there's loads more opportunity to answer your specific questions so the final question oh no i've got two more what am i talking about so i've got a question and this really stood out to me and it's from georgie and georgie asks too old too late too ordinary no confidence no trust how can i move forwards obviously that's a pretty big question um to, now, I can do my best to reassure you that you're not too 
too old, you're not too late. Like people find love and find connection at all different times in their life. However, when it comes to feeling like you're too ordinary, this is where you're gonna probably have to do a bit of work to help improve your self-esteem in this area. Now, when people tell me they're too ordinary, what that makes me think is either you have got really interesting things in your life that you just don't believe anybody else is going to be interested in at the moment. So perhaps you do have things you're really passionate about. You have hobbies, you have interests, you have things you love to do, but you just perhaps assume that other people won't be interested in them. And just like I mentioned in the last section, I'd actually really advise you and encourage you to go out there and share who you are because I think that's going to be the way that you connect with people um when it comes if you really don't feel like you've got anything that makes your life interesting then I think also that's a little challenge to yourself right there to really go out there and start creating more original and more unique experiences for yourself when it comes to having not enough trust or not enough confidence I also want you to understand that both of these things can be built They're not light switches, but they can grow and develop over time. To build confidence, the best thing you can do is to put yourself out there and start to take small action steps, which still do the right thing. So that could be sending messages. It could be replying to messages. It could be having a quick phone call with someone. The more you engage and the more you do things, the more confidence is going to start to be built. And again, trust. Trust, again, has to develop over time and remember the right partners for you aren't going to rush you in anything so just give yourself full permission to take things as slowly as you need to to feel really comfortable okay so final question of this section before we look at your messages and it comes from sean k11 and he asks how to date as an introvert now i'm going to say something you probably won't believe but i actually would really consider myself to be an introvert like when I'm not doing um, coaching sessions like this, I am so much better one-on-one than I am. I find like groups like a bit overwhelming. So what I want you to understand from one introvert to another is that just because you're an introvert or just because you're shy, it doesn't mean you can't do something. It's not lesser or not as good as being an extrovert. So I want you to unattach those two ideas in your mind and instead recognize actually that being an introvert can be a superpower. You're probably going to be a good listener. You're going to be good in one-on-one conversations. So instead of approaching dating from this perspective of I can't do it, approach dating from the perspective of I absolutely can and I'm going to play to my strengths because they absolutely do exist. So in our next section, we are going to be looking at another and very important piece of the online dating jigsaw puzzle, which is how you can send an effective first message.